Let's look at the procedure to replace the lock cylinder in a mid-90s GM vehicle with a pass key one or two system. Now these systems can be identified by looking at the key. It's got a resistor pellet in it and now that's what the theft system uses. There's contacts in the lock cylinder. Now if we look at our new lock cylinder that's one of the challenges here. We've got about a foot and a half of wiring that has to get strung through the steering column here. The vehicle's theft module applies voltage to this measures the resistance of the key value, and then if it's the correct key, will allow the vehicle to start and run. So, first thing we're going to have to do is go to the base of the steering column and find where this connector is plugged in on the old one, and disconnect it before we start any further work. Now we've gone ahead and disconnected the battery, because we have to unplug a bunch of electrical connectors, and later on we're going to be removing the airbag from the vehicle. So, I found the connectors we're looking for here, these two little white wires, that's for our pass key sensor. And that's what we have to remove from this harness. So I'm going to pull this section apart. Now we have to get those wires out. In order to do that, I have to remove a locking tab here. Next I'm going to take my terminal removal tool and release the locking tabs on these two particular wires. Now it really doesn't matter which orientation these wires go in, one way or the other, doesn't make a difference. But we do have to realize which terminals we pulled them out of. Now that we've got this release, it's time to go up top and do some more work. Now that we've got our connector unplugged down below, it's time to remove the airbag assembly. On this particular car, it's just held in by two T30 Torx bits. So once we locate the bolts on the back side, And simply loosen them up and gently remove the airbag. Now you can see it's still got a lot of wires connected here. So we're going to carefully remove the wiring here. Be careful not to damage it. And up top here with the airbag we have a lock that we're going to have to remove. Release the tab and our airbag is now out of the vehicle. We're going to set it safely so that there's no static electricity around it, which may cause an accidental discharge. Now the airbag has been removed, next step is to remove the steering wheel. It's held on by a retainer nut here, which is uh, 13 sixteenths. Once we remove this nut, now we're going to have to take our steering wheel puller kit and install it. See, we'll Put the puller in place and we'll thread in our bolts and get ready to remove the steering wheel. Now that our puller is in place, it's time to remove the steering wheel. We do this by cranking down on the puller with a smooth, steady motion. You can see it just came loose and we can remove the steering wheel now. With the steering wheel removed, the next step is to remove the clock spring. Now you'll notice there's an alignment tab up here right at the 12 o'clock position. And so that's very important that we pay attention to that when we're reinstalling it later on. But we've got a snap ring here, so we're going to take our snap ring pliers, remove the snap ring. For snap ring off, we can remove the clock spring and lay it off to the side. Now we've got a little washer here to remove, and we're going to have to remove the lock plate. That's what prevents the steering wheel from turning while the key is in the off position. In order to remove this, we need a compressor, which is another special tool. We're going to thread that onto the top of the steering column here. Once it's in place, we'll tighten the nut down in order to put some pressure on that lock plate against the spring in the, in the steering column. That will now expose a C-clip, which is holding this lock plate in place. To remove the C-clip, we're going to use a couple 90 degree picks in order to work it around and remove this. Once we've released the clip, now we can remove our tool and release the pressure off this lock plate. With the tool removed, we can remove the clip completely and lift the lock plate 
out of its position. Along with that is the horn ring. Might as well keep these together because this is uh, indexed properly and we'll set those aside for installation later. This now exposes the multifunction switch which contains the turn signals, hazard switch, and the wiper switch. We're going to remove a Phillips screw here, we're going to remove the hazard button, and then we're going to have to access a couple other screws in order to pull this assembly up as well. With the hazard switch and the turn signal mechanism disconnected, we can now unbolt the turn signal switch. This is held in by three T20 Torx bits. And so we're going to take our wrench and remove these three bolts. Now with our three bolts loosened, we can grab the turn signal switch here. And once again, we're gently going to remove it, pull it up here. There should be just enough slack to slide it over the tip of the steering column. Not a whole lot of extra, but now we can get down to where we need to be. Now with the turn signal switch out of the way, next step is to remove the key reminder switch. We're going to do that with our 90 degree pick again and gently work it back and forth and remove it here. Now that's out of the way, we've gotten to where we need to be. You can see the end of the lock cylinder here and you can see our wiring as it comes through the housing and now it's going to snake its way down through the steering column. So we're going to remove the retainer bolt right here, which again is another T20 Torx bit. Once we remove that bolt, you can see it's got a little bit of a shanked head to it. Now the lock cylinder itself can come out. We need to remove the retainer tab in the column here and our next step will be to go back down below in order to make the final step that much easier. Now we're back underneath the dash where we previously disconnected those two wires from the main harness. We're going to take an extra piece of wire or twine, something relatively durable though. We've taped it to those two wires so now as we remove the old lock cylinder we're going to pull these wires through the steering column with our new wire. What that will allow us to do is tape our new lock cylinder wiring to this piece of wire, pull it back down through the steering column. It's going to save us a lot of grief and hassle in the next step. Now we're back up top, we can draw the lock cylinder out of the housing and begin to pull the wiring up through the steering column. One other important tip might be on a tilt column to have the steering tilt in the straight position. It'll help our wires move through the system much easier. As we continue to draw it out, we're going to work our way through the hole here until all the wiring is out. Now that we've drawn this all the way through, we feel pretty good about ourselves because we see our red wire come all the way out again. So the next step, we're going to tape our new lock cylinder to this, and so we'll be able to pull it through and feed that wiring all the way down the steering column. At this point though, we can simply cut the red wire right here, discard our old lock cylinder. We're going to take our, our new lock cylinder and wiring, and we're going to tape it to this and draw it back through now. Now we've retaped our new lock cylinder wiring to our red piece of wire with the idea that we're going to pull this wire and feed it all the way through the steering column now. This is going to take a little bit of work. You might have to help it along a little bit, do a little bit of wiggling and finesse to get it all the way through, but this will work. All right, we've been successful. We've got our, our lock cylinder in here. We need to be careful to route the wiring properly so it doesn't pinch or bind. Install the holder. And here we are down at the bottom now. We've got our wiring. We're going to reverse the removal procedure. So the next step will be to install the hold down bolt, the key reminder. We're going to install the turn signal switch, the hold down plate, the clock spring, the steering wheel, and eventually the airbag. One more step, because of the theft system in this car, remember previously we talked about the pellet resistor here. Now your new lock cylinder is going to come with a pre-cut key, but there's no pellet resistor because obviously we're not sure which resistor your car needs. GM has 15 different varieties of resistors. So what you're going to have to do next is go back to your parts store and have them cut a new key with this same coating but with the same pellet resistor on your previous key. 
Once you get your new key, it should have the correct resistance reading, should have the cut. You should be able to install it back into the lock cylinder and start the vehicle. Now that everything's done up top, we've reinstalled the steering wheel, the turn signal switch, the airbag. We're back down below. And we've got our new wires that we've run through the steering column. We're going to install those into the appropriate tabs here. Slide them down until we feel them click into place. Sometimes you might want to take your pick or screwdriver. Make sure you get that extra little bit down there. Now we're going to take our lock plate, reinstall it, grab our main wire harness that we removed it from in the first place, clip it all together, and we're ready to reinstall. Now the car should be all set to go once we've got our newly cut key.